Okay, so a voltage divider style question uses one of the two equations that we've just been using there. So we're either using V1 over V2 equals R1 over R2, or we're going to use the slightly more complicated looking one of V1 equals R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vs, where Vs is V supply. So this question, a digital camera is used to take pictures. When switched on, the flash on a digital camera requires some time before it's ready to operate. When ready, a green LED is illuminated. So we've got some sort of time delay there. So what sort of input device are we using? A capacitor, exactly. You can see it in there, right here. That's what's creating your time delay. So the part of the circuit used to control the LED is shown below. The voltage at point X is initially zero. So that's like it was in the homework there. Um, before you let electricity flow through a circuit, then the capacitor is at zero volts. Describe what happens to the voltage at point X when switch S is closed. Well, in a capacitor, the voltage charges up to the full voltage of the supply. How fast or how slow it does that depends upon your sizes of resistance and capacitance. Um, so it gradually rises to whatever the supply voltage is here. 6 volts. So gradually rises to 6 volts. And that's what you would write for any type of capacitance question like that. The camera manufacturer wants to change the time <coughs> taken for the flash to be ready to operate. State two changes which could be made to the above circuit so that the time for the green LED to come on is reduced. So we're looking to reduce the time, so we're looking to for the capacitor to be able to charge up quicker. So in order to do that, you need to reduce your size of the capacitance. So reduce C, and also we can reduce the value of the resistance here because that's the other part of, the, of, of this type of circuit that determines how quickly um, a capacitor charges up. Smaller capacitor will take a shorter time to charge up. Smaller resistor will allow electricity to flow through it and into the capacitor more easily. So reduce C and reduce R. So pretty straightforward so far. The next part of the question really goes on to look at um, the calculation side of things. So that's where we're going to have to use one of these equations. And it really depends upon the values that we're given, which one of these two we use. So the camera flash is designed to operate under dim lighting conditions. So we're involving light now, so we're looking at uh, an LDR, which is you know an, an input sensor. Another part of the circuit for the camera flash is shown below. The flash only operates when a minimum voltage of 0.7 occurs across the LDR. So remember, it's this little voltage across here at the bottom part of this voltage divider that determines whether this transistor switch is on. So it must be 0.7 down here. Calculate the voltage across the 53 kilo ohm resistor when the voltage across the LDR is 0.7. So the important thing to look for here is this bit. It's only one mark, so it's not going to be a calculation. Anytime you get one mark, you know it's usually just going to be something that you can figure out through simple addition, subtraction, or maybe just in your head. Our total voltage here is 6 volts. If we've got 0 0.7 volts across here, we've got 5.3 volts that's missing somewhere, so the 5.3 volts is here. Because remember, all these uh, resistors are doing is splitting up the voltage across the components, depending on how, how big or how small they are. So your voltage across the 53 kilo ohm resistor will be a 6, which is your supply voltage, minus 0 0.7. So it's 5.3 volts. You could just write 5.3 volts in there, and you get the one marker. They're not going to be looking for a specific um, calculation here. Calculate the minimum resistance of the LDR that allows the flash to operate in dim condition. So here we've got to use one of the equations that I highlighted earlier. So this is applying the, the voltage divider knowledge and the knowledge of those equations to a real life situation. So we look at what we have first of all. We've got the supply voltage. So we've got Vs over here. And if we say that this is maybe R1 and R2, remember it doesn't necessarily matter which way around you put those, those resistance values, 
R1 and R2, as long as you put the right ones into the equation. So R1 and R2, we have the values of those. Um, we've got V1, and we've also got V2. So we've got V1, V2, R1, but not R2. Sorry, I might have had that, but we don't have that one. We don't have R2. So that really kind of rules out this one, because we need to know the values of both resistances in order to use that equation. So we can, we can basically take this one out. Away it goes. Whereas if we use this one, which is also in the data booklet just like this one is, we have a V1 and V2, because we've just kind of calculated that here. We have R1. R1 is 53 kilo ohms, but we don't have R2. So we can use that equation to figure out what R2 is. So V1 over V2 is equal to R1 over R2. So V1 we will call, in fact, I went and got those around the wrong way, haven't I? So that's V1 and that's V2, because remember that must match up with the corresponding resistance value. Um, so V1 we'll call 5.3. V2 is 0 0.7. R1 is 53 kilo ohms. So we don't know whether this, this value for the LDR, it probably will be. Uh, you know, you could put it in kilo ohms as well, but I would convert that kilo ohms, this 53 kilo ohms, into ohms here just in case. So 53 kilo ohms is 53,000 ohms divided by. R2. So in order to figure that out, remember there were a couple of ways we can do this. Um, we, I think most of us were comfortable with the cross multiplication method. So we're looking at 5.3 R2 and I cross multiply these. Somebody will need to do this for me, 53,000 times 0.7. Seven thousand one hundred. Seven thousand one hundred. Fifty-seven thousand one hundred. Thank you. And then divide that answer by five point three for me, please. Seven thousand. Seven thousand ohms or seven kilo ohms. Some of you might have been able to see that that was going to be the answer already anyway. But we've used one of these equations. Remember, you're only ever going to be able to use one. It really depends on the values that you're given. But essentially, the calculations are always the same every time.